Welcome to Echo 201, Study Session 10, The Theory of Monopoly, Introduction. A monopoly and a perfect competition represent two polar extremes of market situation. Monopoly occurs when there is a single seller in the market. In this case, it is impossible to distinguish between a firm and an industry. Also, unlike the firm under perfect competition, which cannot influence market price, a monopolist has power to influence the market price by changing the level of its output. It can influence the ruling price level. Learning outcomes. When you have studied this session, you should be able to, one, I like the main features of monopoly, two, show the equilibrium position of the monopoly, Three, explain the reasons for the existence of monopoly. Four, show the differences between ordinary monopoly and price discriminatory monopoly. The relationship between a monopoly's average and marginal revenue. You were informed in the introductory section of this study session that there are some important differences between the average and the marginal revenue cost of the monopolist and the perfect competitive fair. On the perfect competition, both the marginal and the average revenue curves are the same and perfectly elastic. In the case of the monopolist, both are downward sloping and are not equal. The marginal revenue curve is below the demand curve. Since the sale of an extra unit reduces the price at which all units are sold, resulting in a net addition to revenue of an amount less than its original price. A simple example is illustrated in Table 10.1. Scenario 1, Price 30 Naira rate of sales per year 100 total revenue 3000 marginal revenue zero average revenue 30. scenario two price 29 naira 50 cover rate of sales per year 102 total revenue 3000 nine naira marginal revenue 4.5 and then average revenue 29.5 scenario three 20, price 29 naira, rate of sales per year 104, total revenue 3016 naira, marginal revenue 3 naira 50 kobo, and average revenue 29. In table 10.1, you can see that when the price of the commodity is 30 naira, the monopolist was making a sales of 100 units per year bringing total revenue to 3,000. However, for the monopolist to boost his sales to 102 units, it has to reduce price. This reduction will not only affect the 102 units, but all the previous 100. This will lead to increase in total revenue. However, the marginal revenue 4.5 is below the price and the average revenue. The relationship between total and I take that again. The relationship between total, average, and marginal revenue is illustrated below. Equilibrium of a monopolist. The, the technological fact of life are the same for the monopoly as for a competitive firm. So the short run cost curves have the same stages in both cases. The difference lies in the demand conditions. While the perfectly competitive firm is faced with a perfectly elastic demand for its products, the monopolist is faced with a downward sloping demand curve. The equilibrium output and price are Q and P1. This equilibrium meets the several conditions for profit maximization behavior. Marginal cost equals marginal revenue. 
marginal cost cuts marginal revenue from below and price is greater than average variable cost the net profit in this case is represented by the shaded portion however there is nothing that guarantees that the monopolies will make profit in the short run whether it makes profit or not depends on the position of the average total cost where the average total cost is tangential to the demand curve the monopolies earns zero profit and output q1 as shown below firm and industry short run and long run a monopoly is the only producer in an industry thus there is no distinction between the firm and the industry unlike under perfect competition where there is no barrier to entry the existence and the continuous operation of a monopoly depends on its ability to bar other firms from entering into the industry where it is likely successful there might not be as much difference between the short and the long run equilibrium position of the firm in other words if the firm is making profit in the short run this can also extend into the long run if it can successfully discourage other firms from coming into the market reasons for the existence of monopolies one patent laws patent laws may create and perpetuate monopolies by conferring on the patent holder the sole right to produce a particular commodity government may grant a firm a charter or a franchise that prohibits competition by law two economies of scale monopolies may also rise because of economies of scale the established firm may retain a monopoly through a cost advantage because it can produce at a lower cost than could any new and necessarily smaller competitor three access to raw materials in a situation where one firm has the sole access to raw materials used for producing a commodity other firms may not be able to enter into the industry four a monopoly may also be perpetuated by force potential competitors may be intimidated by threats ranging from sabotage to a price war which the established monopolies has sufficient financial resources to win price discrimination in general price discrimination occurs when a producer sells a commodity to different buyers at different prices for reasons not associated with differences in cost for example doctors lawyers barbers sometimes vary their fees according to the income of their clients cinemas also charge lower admission prices for children price discrimination occurs because different units of a commodity can be sold at different prices and it will be profitable for the seller to take advantage of these if he can however for price discrimination to be possible certain conditions must be present first that it can control what is offered to a particular buyer and second that it can prevent the resale of the commodity by one buyer to another the first of the two conditions control over supply is the feature that makes price discrimination an aspect of the theory of monopoly monopoly power in some form is necessary but not sufficient for price discrimination the second of the two conditions ability to prevent resale tends to be associated with the character of the product or the ability to classify buyers into readily identifiable groups services are also easily resold than goods 
equilibrium of a price discriminating monopoly. Consider a monopoly firm that sells a single product into two distinct markets, A and B. Let's also assume that there is no possibility of resale from one market to another. Since the firm can discriminate, it is under no obligation to charge the same price in market A that is charged in market B. How then will it behave in each market? The marginal cost of producing another unit for sale in market A would depend on how much is being produced for sale in market B and vice versa. To determine what overall production should be, we need to know the overall marginal revenue. To find this, we merely sum the separate quantities in each market that correspond to each marginal revenue. The firm's total profit maximizing output is at Q1, where MR1 and MC1 intersect at a value C1. The firm we allocate sales between the market until the marginal revenue of the last unit so is in each market at the same. Summary. In this study session, you learn that a monopolist is a single seller of a commodity. It can influence either price or quantity sold of its commodity but not both. The revenue curves under the monopolies are downward sloping and are not identical like the situation under perfect competition. The equilibrium condition of the monopolies is the same with that of a perfect competitive firm. They both produce at the point at which their marginal revenue curve intercepts the marginal cost curve. It is also possible for a monopolist to make profit both in the short and long run. The continuous existence of a mo I take that again. The continuous existence of a monopolist depends on its ability to bar entry into the industry. You also learn that a discriminatory monopoly arises in a situation where a monopolist can charge different prices for different units of the same commodity for reasons not due to cost of production. This is the end of study session 10. Thanks for listening.